All right, here I am right back. Um, so we just finished modeling our stoichiometric reactor. Okay, and so we just finished problem one, playing around with um, this reaction of DTBP to form acetone and ethane. Uh, we consider a stoichiometric reactor. So remember, stoichiometric reactor, we can have a single reaction, a liquid or gas phase. I need to define the chemistry, so I need to know the stoichiometry of my reaction. And then I can specify uh, the conversion. It can run adiabatically or isothermally, um, but all I can do is I can specify the, the conversion. Okay. In problem two, we're going to look at an equilibrium reactor. So the big difference between an equilibrium reactor versus a stoichiometric reactor is I can have multiple reactions. So I can have a single reaction, as we'll have here, or I could have multiple reactions. You can specify conversion exactly as you did for a stoichiometric reactor. The one other difference then is if you have equilibrium data. So if you have thermodynamic data that allow you to calculate an equilibrium constant or if one's available in the literature, you can define the equilibrium constant or specify the equilibrium constant for your reaction. And then you can define your conversion with respect to equilibrium. So rather than just say, hey, my reaction goes to 100%, I can say it goes to thermodynamic equilibrium. So 100% conversion with respect to uh, equilibrium. But we're just going to play with this uh, simple DTBE, this the single reaction that we have. And so we're actually not going to see a difference for, for our problem. But I'm going to delete my stoichiometric reactor. And I'm going to drag in my equilibrium. And I'll recre reconnect my reactant and product streams. Okay. And so again, um, my reactant, so I have 100 kilomoles per hour pure DTPE, so it's a liquid at these conditions. It's 110 degrees C and, and 760 millimeters of mercury. Oh, looks like it's not actually connected. Okay, now it is. Okay, now my equilibrium reactor. Okay, so things are going to look a little differently. All right, so first, okay, I need to specify the number of reactions. Okay, so in this case, I'm still just going to have one, but if you have multiple reactions, you could specify. Okay. Now I can also specify a change in pressure for the equilibrium reactor. Okay, I'm going to leave this unchanged. But just like you know, my comment in the last video about a PFR is ChemCAD won't calculate the change in pressure. Right, this is something that you would need to specify. So maybe you're modeling. You know, it, it's very often what, what happens is you know I'm going to model the reactor more rigorously in say a MATLAB or, or a different program. And so maybe I'm you know there I'm performing a rigorous calculation for a, a PFR. All right, I then might, you know, compute that corresponding pressure drop if it's a packed bed reactor. Um, and then I could feed that in here where I'm going to model this as a much more simplistic uh, model um, within my flow sheet. Okay. All right. So in terms of reactor model, we're going to use a general equilibrium reactor. Okay. The others is there's a shift reactor, methanation reactor. And so this would be, you know, correspond to my water gas shift reactor. Um, but these are going to be, it's going to, essentially be an equilibrium reactor, but these will be cases in which, you know, um, ChemCAD has knowledge of the corresponding equilibrium data and the reactions for that given process. Okay, so we're going to be a general equilibrium reactor in which we'll define our reaction and then we'll have option of specifying our thermodynamic data. Okay, you have multiple options now. It could be a liquid phase reaction, it could be a vapor only, um, or it could be mixed phase. Okay, in our case it's going to be vapor. Um, so remember, this is going to be an exothermic reaction. And so at the actual conditions of our reaction, um, we'll have a gas phase. Okay, so we're going to model this as vapor only. And we can play around with, with some of the other things. Thermal mode, right? We can have adiabatic again, isothermal, or specify the heat duty. And so I believe in the first case, just like the last, we'll start by modeling as isothermal and a temperature of 154.6 degrees C. Okay, and then it'll calculate the corresponding heat duty. Okay. Um, now, in terms of calculation mode, right, I can have parallel or series reactions. So this is going to be useful if I have multiple reactions happening, but I only have one, so it, it doesn't matter. Okay, um, and then <clears throat> so we'll, we could, we're going to specify reaction conversion. Again, we can have parallel reactions or series. You could specify an approach temperature, right? So essentially, approach temperature is going to be um, should be the change in temperature between my um, um, the change in temperature.
be, so I'm, uh, you know, if I specify if I'm running isothermally and I specify uh, reactor temperature, um, oh, I'm, I'm blanking, right? Um, the change in temperature of my um, stream between reactant uh, and product. Uh, actually, I'm going to have to follow up again in terms of approach temperature or we'll play with it. Um, but this is going to only be useful if um, I have equilibrium data because my equilibrium constant is temperature dependent. And so, you know, if I were to specify, you know, temperature of my reactants, right, the, the conversion is going to be dependent on that the temperature, right? So if I specify an equilibrium constant, right, the equilibrium constant is a function of temperature. And so if I were to specify a, a conversion, um, you know, specifying a temperature is going to dictate the corresponding equilibrium constant, right? So if I, if I, if I pin down T, right, that's going to fix the, the conversion, right? And so temperature and, and conversion are, are directly related via my equilibrium constant. Um, so let me just specify, I'm going to specify a conversion, and then where we'll do that is that's going to come in when we click OK, um, and we're going to have to specify our reaction or define our reaction in, in our equilibrium data. Okay. So in terms of more specifications, right, we'll, we'll leave this, you know, here for blank for now. Um, this, right, this reaction engineering units, this is going to be important if I were defining an equilibrium constant. Right, this is going to correspond to the units um, within that equilibrium constant um, as I were to define it. But we're going to keep it simple for now. So I'm going to specify the conversion. So when I click OK, I'll get a new pop-up window. Okay, and this is where I said there was one reaction. So you know, after I enter this, react, window 2 would come up for reaction 2 and, and so on and so forth if I had multiples. But I just have one reaction. So I need to specify base component, right? So this is the component I'm going to define my conversion uh, and my equilibrium constant with respect to. Okay, So I'm going to choose a base component of my uh, DTBP. Okay. Now, A, B, C, D, E, right? These are all constants in my equilibrium expression here. So this is my expression that ChemCAD is using for my equilibrium constant. If I were to leave this blank, right, it's just the same um, as assuming it's zero which point I'd get an equilibrium constant of, of one, right? Um, and so, right, if this were all zeros, the exponential of zero would just be one, it'd be an equilibrium constant of, of one, okay? Um, but essentially, you could think of it as, by keeping it a zero, um, you know, you, you're not even inputting the equilibrium constant, you would just have a reaction that would otherwise go to uh, completion. Okay. You could specify heat of reaction if you want, um, and so I'm going to specify here where I'm going to specify my fractional conversion. So my fractional conversion, right, we're going to start out with 85%. Okay, and so I'm just going to specify fractional conversion. Then I need to specify uh, my stoichiometric coefficient. So DTBE, right, had a stoichiometric coefficient of negative 1. Then I need to add acetone and ethane from my drop-down list. Acetone is going to be negative two and ethane negative one or two and and one. Okay. Cool. All right, and so I won't specify an um, exponential factor, right? It's just going to be my stoichiometric coefficients, and then that is that is it. Okay. So if I click OK, OK, it won't take me to another window because I've only specified one uh, reaction. I click Run Selected. I get an 85% conversion of my 85% um, conversion of my DTBE. Okay, so 270 kilomoles per hour flowing out. Um, I was running isothermally at 154.6 degrees C. It doesn't calculate a change in pressure. All right, so this is going to look very similar to my stoichiometric reactor. All right, I calculated heat duty. Right, negative 10,678.7. Right, so this is one of the same as our stoichiometric reactor that we had before. Okay. Where things would be different, okay, is if I keep this the same and just click OK, is if I had equilibrium data, right, I could define my equilibrium constant, at which point my fractional conversion would be defined with respect to equilibrium. Right? Now I'm, you know, 
didn't give you a clear answer in terms of what's meant by approach temperature, right? We'd have to look it up in the documentation because I'm blanking at the moment. Um, but you can think of, you know, if I specify conversion, especially, so if I specify conversion, right, typically with an equilibrium reactor, if I had my equilibrium constant, right, if I had um, parameters for my expression for my equilibrium constant, I could define my conversion with respect to equilibrium. Okay, that's great. Okay, my equilibrium constant's a function of T. So spin, uh, specifying temperature, right, would be equivalent to specifying my equil equilibrium constant. If my reaction goes to, you know, equilibrium or some, you know, I have a, specify a conversion with respect to equilibrium, right, I, I pin down those final compositions, right? So it's one and the same. Specifying the temperature could be one and the same as specifying that final distribution of, of compositions. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's the basic of my equilibrium reactor. It's going to be very similar. Um, and so, you know, if I were to model this as adiabatic, okay, so then Q is taken to be zero. So keep all this the same and I run it. Okay. Now I go back in and it's going to compute the corresponding temperature. Okay. This could be the temperature of my product stream. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah, if I come back here, right, so here's my heat of reaction and more specifications, um, and it's with respect to an ideal gas state. Okay. My reaction engineering units, again, this I would have to play with um, if I had, you know, if my constants with my equilibrium expression um, had units. But, um, but yeah, and when I look at my product stream, right, my product stream is a gas, all right, this is a gas phase reaction, okay, you know, if I were to specify this as, you know, vapor phase reaction mix phase, okay, let's see what happens, okay, so if I run it, right, this is going to look exactly the same, okay, um, temperature is going to look exactly the same, all right, as is my heat of reaction, right? Mix phase would be, all right, I have some liquid phase or vapor liquid coexistence, um, you know, in my system and the reaction's only taking place in, in the gas phase. Um, but, um, but yeah, if I were to choose liquid only, let's see what happens. So if I say liquid only and I run it, okay, it's actually not going to change at all. So, um, for some come here, right, same temperature, okay, now it is calculating the heat of reaction, so with respect to an ideal gas is the same, um, the liquid phase, they also compute a liquid phase value here uh, now as well, okay, but, you know, this one, you know, it, it you know, I, I guess where this is a little misleading is, so I'm going to go to vapor only because that's what we have, is that I define that we have an overall conversion of 85%. Right, so we define the stoichiometry of our reaction, and then we're specifying that 85% of our DTBE is being converted to products, and so we're we're just specifying that overall conversion, and so really in our case, ChemCat's just acting as um, you know calculator performing our mass and energy balance for that process. But that's a basic equilibrium reactor. Um, we'll move on to. Gibbs and stoichiometric next.